Welcome to the University of Washington Health Sciences. Whether they stand alone or work together collaboratively, these six health sciences schools represent the most exciting and exhilarating research, teaching, and patient care in the country. I think the University of Washington is a, a great place to practice medicine. We have a very large school of medicine um, with some of the world's experts in their field, and it's a wonderful environment to work in. One day I might be seeing patients all day, and another day I might be working on research, and another day I'm committed to teaching residents, and uh, another day I might be here hopefully watching a soccer goal. <laughs> My research focuses on uh, emergency planning uh, at athletic events, specifically in preparation for uh, sudden cardiac arrest at the athletic event. Having the right preparations could be the difference between uh, survival and a bad outcome. Call for help now. What medical students do, are doing now is really amazing. Volunteering in the community, public outreach, working at uh, underserved clinics, helping individuals who may not have access to health care. And I'm just trying to feel for lifts or thrills. Could she have another condition yeah. right, that has nothing to do with her thyroid? Or, oh, yeah. There is a shortage of primary care doctors. I would define that as a family medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine. Some would also include women's health, what's called obstetrics and gynecology. The University of Washington has been a great place to teach. They have a strong commitment to primary care training. Uh, they have uh, a good diversity amongst students and faculty. I'll let Dr. Marisco know that you're here. I chose to work in underserved communities for a variety of reasons, uh, one of which I think was just my own background as a Native American person. Family medicine is totally rewarding. We get to see women when they're pregnant and get to be there when their babies are born. I get to see elders. You can make a difference for that whole community. And I think we as family physicians have a responsibility to do that. The kind of technology that's developed from the human genome has allowed us to understand uh, aspects of the zebrafish genome, believe it or not, as well as vice versa. Why fish? Uh, they're pretty small. You can raise large numbers of them, uh, which means you can look at lots of animals and get an idea of variation, how things change. We can watch these cells as they initially form uh, because these embryos being so little, you can use microscopes to actually just look right inside them and see the cells right in front of your eyes, essentially. We're mainly interested in questions of how the body is put together and how does it recover from damage. Well, that's great. It's a really exciting time in biology. The new genetic tools from the Human Genome Project and others have really uh, opened up research in a way that's going to have tremendous impact on us as humans and us in the world over the next 50 years. For example, in heart disease, why heart cells are dying and perhaps uh, how heart cells could be repaired. So genetic counselors yeah. use several tools in genetic counseling. This is your mom and her family and your dad and his family. One of the main ones is a family history where we ask about usually three generations of a family and what kind of medical conditions are in the family. How old was your mother when she had breast cancer? And then we can trace those diseases to help inform the patient and the family about what tests would be available. Genetic tests are varied. Many of them are blood tests and they're looking at the DNA or at a biochemical marker. Genetic counseling is so exciting because it's still a relatively new field and I think almost anyone will need to see a genetic counselor during their life. ISIS is really unique because we can go from skills training, so how do you tie a knot, how do you do a procedure, to really simulating the entire operating room environment. It's hard rates a little fast. So once you learn the basic skills, so camera navigation, instrument navigation, coordination, grasping, what we call the bile duct, here's the intestine. So I'm gonna take the gallbladder and I can actually move it around. So we can come here and we can train an emergency. We can simulate a gunshot wound. We can simulate a, a patient with a heart attack and really practice as a team managing those situations. Charging. That ability to use modern technology, laparoscopic surgery, to really help somebody, get them back on their feet, get them back to their family, it, there's nothing better. 
The University of Washington School of Medicine is the medical school for a five-state region, Washington, Wyoming, Alaska, Montana, and Idaho. Students train in rural community clinics in these five states, as well as at Harborview Medical Center and University of Washington Medical Center, two of the region's most comprehensive, state-of-the-art healthcare facilities. Chances are, if you fall climbing Mount Rainier, or suffer severe burns or head trauma from a car accident, you would be transported to Harborview Medical Center and put back together. As the only level one pediatric and adult trauma center in a four-state region, Harborview serves the most severely injured and critically ill. Owned by King County and managed by UW Medicine, Harborview welcomes and treats a diverse population, including non-English speaking patients and the homeless. UW Medical Center is known for making history. It is the site of many firsts, including the world's first long-term kidney dialysis and the Northwest's first heart transplant and total knee replacement. UW Medical Center is internationally recognized for providing the highest medical standards in an environment of caregiving excellence. It is consistently ranked among the top 10 hospitals in the nation.